Good evening, and welcome to What's Your Story? Tonight's episode is Jiu-Jitsu, the art of self-defense. Self-defense is as old as mankind. However, the techniques employed to defend yourself comes in many variations. Tonight, we are going to learn about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My guest, Greg Wood, is an instructor who teaches people how to defend themselves through the use of this form of martial arts. Welcome to the show, Greg. Thanks so much for having me, Jim. Greg, would you please tell our audience a bit about yourself, like where you were born, where you went to school or college? Do you have siblings? Give us a little bit of flavor about your family. Sure, happily. Uh, I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut, born and raised, and uh, I lived there my whole life. Um, I went on to, I have a brother and a sister. Uh, they are six and seven years older than me. And, um, so you're the baby. So I am absolutely the baby. All right. Okay. And I definitely lived up to the uh, <laughs> to that to that name. To yeah. the uh, third born, you know, performer <laughs> okay. uh, thing. I, I did go to uh, I, I where my brother and sister had a, a strong focus in academia. I got really interested in music when I was um, about 14. I started playing bass. That became uh, music became a, a really important pastime for me, and I did. I ended up going to school in Boston at Berkeley College of Music as a bass player, and I learned to play some other instruments there. But music was a really big part of my life, uh, basically uh, in Connecticut, and then as I grew older. So, what high school did you graduate from? I went to Hall High School. And what's the mascot? I ask everybody that. Oh, the Warriors. The Warriors. The Warriors. The Hall High School Warriors. Yes. What are the colors? Uh, blue and white. All right. Wow. Okay. Are you still a warrior? Yeah. It's always a warrior. Always a warrior. Yeah, I actually worked at Hall later, too. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, as a student activities director. All right. So you're born right there in West Hartford? So, born. And, and lived, still lives there? Uh, left and came back. And uh, no, actually, now I have moved, uh, I'm married, and I have moved uh, with Lisa, my wife, to um, uh, Forestville, Bristol, just around the corner from okay. um, the okay. martial arts school that we're okay. now. Okay. All right. Cool. Now, you're quite the Renaissance man. You teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, guitar, songwriting and entrepreneurship. Would you tell our audience about the, those aspects of your life? Let's start with the, with the guitar. We, we're gonna talk about the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but yes. how did you end up a guitar teacher? Um, I just love learning. I mean, if there's something that I think that, I, that, that my parents got right or my upbringing uh, really in, infused in me, it was a passion for learning. So, so my life really has been uh, a recurring theme of learning all about something I'm passionate about and then teaching other people. So um, music, I learned all about. And uh, yes, I still teach. Uh, uh, I have a couple of guitar students still, but I've taught for uh, almost 20 years. Um, what, what particular uh, type? Bass guitar or um, acoustic? I actually, or? While I was at Berkeley, I learned guitar as well. Um, and I played piano as a kid, and I taught myself drums. So I, I play kind of all of the rock band instruments. And uh, I focus on, uh, I have always focused on rock and blues and folk with my guitar students. Uh, I had, uh, I have had bass students too, but they're fewer and further between when it was uh, something that was an important part of me making a living. Teaching guitar was uh, more lucrative, but more fun. I, I really did become ultimately a, uh, a performer until I was 30. Um, about 10 years ago, I did uh, travel and uh, live on the road and perform full time. So that's that's something I keep my toe dipped in just by, um, you know, teaching other people. I teach adults actually, not kids, but and I have helped people, yeah, produce their songs. So I teach songwriting with people and uh, and I'll even take them in the studio and, and record with them. Uh, again, I'm doing less of that now because we're more busy with I have like the two businesses. But um, and I taught entrepreneurship, which you mentioned. Um, uh, business was something I fell in love with when, I, as I, you know, pursued music and getting concerts and getting paid for those concerts involves a little bit of business acumen. And, and I actually found that I really liked um, pursuing entrepreneurship as just an ambitious musician. And uh, I basically have been a serial entrepreneur besides even just the music. A serial entrepreneur. Uh, definitely a serial uh, okay, entrepreneur. Yeah. I've probably run like. 20 businesses plus. Is that right? Yeah. In, the, in the, you know, some, some small things, some bigger things, but yeah, over the course of my life. I think it might have started, I got that, excuse me, I got that uh, Don LaPree uh, one tiny classified ad from my, you know, one, tiny one bedroom apartment. I got that from that infomercial when I was like 16. I was intrigued. So uh, yeah, I had a passion for uh, entrepreneurship basically always. Well, you know, you, you, you touched on something that piqued my interest. You said blues. You teach the blues guitar? Oh, yeah. Uh, 
what's what's different in a blues guitar versus another style? What's um, well, most of the styles I like actually come from blues. I mean, so if I the, like rock, the derivatives of yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, blues is uh, um, you know primarily comes down to the scales you use and note choices that you make. Okay. And uh, like every instrument, the best guitar players are able at times to make the instrument sound like a human voice. Uh, we would all know blues singing. I think if we heard it, it's about playing in between the notes and uh, dancing around the notes uh, in, in such a way as to capture the emotion. I think it's one of the best place, ways to play the guitar. I'm always impressed by great blues or blues-based rock, which all rock players basically I had are. a chance to go to New Orleans, uh, to uh, Mississippi, and I was uh, on Beale Street. Okay. And I was walking around, and, and, and I saw B.B. King's place and his guitar. Yes. Lucille, I think he called it. Yes. Yeah, it, it was an amazing experience, right? Yes. Well, I don't want people to get bored with us reminiscing about music, <laughs> so let's talk about what, what you're here to tell us all about and what sure. that... By the way, what is that outfit called that you're wearing? So I'm wearing, um, I'm wearing a, a gi. G-I. A gi. It's the it's the same word they use, I think, in karate and other other martial arts. This, this is the kimono uh, that we wear when we practice martial arts. When we practice, uh, in my case, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Okay. Now, you could take your time and answer this one. Would you please tell our audience how you got involved in jiu-jitsu and how it has changed your life? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I was always interested in in martial arts. I mean, of course, I'm I'm of the Karate Kid generation, and, and uh, yes. you know, my brother was uh, you know just a few years older than me, like I said, and he was the uh, all the kung fu movies on Saturdays he would be sitting in there watching. So um, I've always known martial arts were cool, and uh, something I wanted to know. I uh, I did karate, I think, as a kid, really briefly, um, just at a local place, um, but uh, I quit within you know kind of a year because I wasn't I didn't catch the bug. I, I was, they kept giving me belts, but I wasn't sure I was really actually safer or better at, you know, I didn't feel like a ninja yet. Um, as an adult, when I, just as my, just as one of the waves of my uh, sort of performing career was um, ebbing, I got a call from my friend who lived in Connecticut while I was living in California, which I was doing briefly. Um, it was my friend Eric, uh, my best friend since middle school, and he said, he worked at Moto Photo at that time. We were both about uh, 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. Yes. Um, he worked at Moto Photo, and someone brought in pictures. Uh, he, he told me the story. There's a man that brought in pictures of himself doing martial arts with, I think, Elio Gracie. And, and I knew the name right now. I, I knew the name right away, but... Um, uh, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, Elliot Gracie is the father of Hoist Gracie, who made a big splash in the United States in uh, 1993, when at the first UFC, he was the, and, uh, he was the winner. And the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Challenge. Okay, yeah. In, in the beginning, now everybody knows it as, as MMA, Mixed Martial Arts. In the beginning, the UFC was created to answer what is kind of an indecent question in the martial arts world, which is, you know, if I'm awesome at boxing and you're awesome at wrestling, who wins, right? So it's art against art. That was in the beginning what the Ultimate Fighting Challenge was. So for people who are interested in martial arts, um, they would learn by watching which practitioners ended up being the most effective. So um, representing his family's art, which was Gracie Jiu Jitsu, or yes. uh, and the Gracies are from Brazil, so we, we now know it as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay. Representing Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Hoist Gracie won the first Ultimate Fighting Challenge. So he he answered this indecent question, you know, by saying, you know, it's it's me. My family's martial art is the best. Uh, he went on to win uh, the second one, and I believe the third one, and I, or all his matches anyway, in the first, second, third, and fifth uh, Ultimate Fighting Challenges. So he made a, an incredible showing. That's over a number of years in the mid '90s, and. Um, they brought their father on, Elio Gracie, Hoist's father, Elio Gracie, came on one time, and I, I honestly wouldn't even be able to pick, to pick him out of a picture the way that Eric had, mm -hmm. but to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award, they brought him on stage at the Ultimate Fighting Challenge. And I was probably thinking, you know, let's get the next fight going. But, um, but they gave him a ceremony, um, because it was actually another one of his sons that started the Ultimate Fighting Challenge, Hori and Gracie. Um, but it turned out, as Eric started a conversation with, uh, with the guy whose name was Jim, uh, that Jim was going to be opening a school, and it hadn't opened yet, and it was opening in you know a few weeks, some number of weeks, um, around when I was going to be getting home. And Eric said, "Hey, 
the school's going to be opening. It's the first day, and this is a Hoist Gracie school in West Hartford, you know, our, our little, you know, idyllic suburb. So, absolutely, absolutely. So I, so I said, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll move back for that. I mean, things, are, things just ended with, like, sort of a project I had going on. Came back to Connecticut, uh, moved back, and uh, I was there day one with Eric at gym school, which was the first uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu focused school uh, probably in New England. There, there was one in New York, and there was one in Philly and Florida and Utah. And, um, but for the, but this was the first, this was early days in terms of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu making its, making its big move from Brazil to the United States. So this is a, this is, this is a martial art people hear about now because of the United, the, uh, UFC and because MMA is big and most people incorporate Brazilian Jiu Jitsu into their MMA because it's been proven effective. So most people are hearing about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for the first time because of the media, but also because it hasn't been in this country for that long. 80s is about the I first you start to you, hear about the, it being. So the history of it is what, just the 80s? Yeah, it's been around, obviously, in Brazil since the, uh, I don't know, I think it's 20s or 30s. But, uh, um, and, and, we, and you know, the history goes back and there's stories of the legends that like sort of came from Japan to Brazil and how it became Brazilian in its own. Does jiu-jitsu right. mean, mean something? It's, the words mean something? The words mean the gentle art or, and uh, uh, so and it, and it really is when you get to know, uh, which which I'm sure we'll discuss the differences between Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and other martial arts. Yes, you do find that it that that it's a gentler approach um, to to winning a, a fight. And, you know, martial arts basically helps a person answer the uh, the the problem if somebody's trying to you know uh, control or wound or kill me. You know. How do I escape or wound or kill them? Yes. Right. Um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, the focus is really on um, creating controls, breaking controls. Uh, that's and and certainly there there are you know, there are wounding attacks and attacks which could take a person's life. I mean, this is pretty heavy, considering the way that I, I see Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in my life now, which is uh, not just as a martial art but as a lifestyle. Um, but that, as a martial art, it's been proven extremely effective against talented uh, martial artists from other styles and, and within the mixed martial arts community. But um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very effective martial art. And uh, it was because of its proven effectiveness that, that I, was so, I was so intrigued and, and had to learn from- Had to get involved, voice. yeah. Yeah, from the, yeah. From the sort of, yeah. who we, they call him the godfather of MMA now. Now, now Greg, uh, I think most of our viewing audience know Bruce Lee. Yes. That, that name, uh, you know, the movies that you talked about, Enter the Dragon and, Dragon and all of those. Now, I, he stands, in my mind, because I know very little about it, but he stands as, as the, the measure of, uh, what was he, a karate expert? Is that what he was? Or uh, I think it was Kung Fu that ultimately kung became his own style called Jeet Kune Do. Okay, so he was a Kung Fu artist. Okay. Yes. Now, who, who is Bruce Lee's equal in jiu-jitsu today? I mean, uh, standing a, a way above everybody. <clears throat> Uh, I would say that Bruce Lee was an unbelievable martial artist, and every, everybody, I think, knows that. But they also know him because he's famous. And I would say the equivalent in Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, to Bruce Lee probably would be Hoist Gracie, uh, spelled R-O-Y-C-E. Uh, most people mispronounce it Royce when they first see it. Right, just like I did. <laughs> oh, no, you, I mean, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Hoist, Hoist is the guy who showed up on TV first, made a big showing as to the effectiveness of the martial art, yep. and is basically the reason the most people know about it. Um, are there people, uh, you know, are there other legends uh, from before Hoist's time? Uh, absolutely. His father was, was uh, you know, none of us would have heard of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu if it wasn't for Hoist's father and um, uh, some of his contemporaries who, who, you know, the family story is amazing. Like the reason we've that that it made it from Brazil to the United States, or that there's even a Brazilian jiu-jitsu, sure, even sure. segmented in its own right, is because these guys, uh, you know, uh, they're differing differing accounts on how they, uh, you know, change it into their own art. But yeah. essentially, there is a difference between Brazilian jiu-jitsu and Japanese jiu-jitsu, and these early. Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, who were all really the brothers from the Gracie family ah, and a, yes. a few other people. It was truly a family affair. It really was, and it's a really prolific family. I mean, okay. Elio okay. had six sons, but wow. more than that, children. You know, they they all have they all seem to have many sons. Okay. So it's 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 actually the largest athletic family dynasty wow. in, in any sport 
uh, in history. So from Japan to other parts of the world, yes. and most notably from uh, Brazil to the United States. Is yes. that that's a path? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and there, were, what, there were judo players and jujitsu players who would travel the world from Japan okay. trying to spread the word about their own art. Well, some tried to keep it to themselves, but there were ambassadors that went out uh, to do demonstrations and, okay. and make right. famous their yes. art. And one of, these, one of these guys, Mitsuo Maeda, uh, they called him um, uh, Konde Koma, Count Koma. He, he came to Brazil to show his art, and he ended up... Um, uh, um, now I'm afraid I'm going to get part of the history wrong, it's okay. but I've heard it enough times. I mean, he, he came to Brazil. He ended up teaching the father of, of Elio Gracie, who's Hoyce's father. He ended up teaching him and his brother uh, and just a couple other people uh, his jujitsu, his Good Japanese jujitsu. Jiu wow. And it modified as it went through the family. Absolutely, yes. And then, and then the family ended up going on to do something that Conde Coma had done, which was issue a challenge match. So they said... There was even an ad in the paper, and there, there, you know, the record of this exists. There was even an ad in the paper challenging anyone to come with any experience level of any size to come wow. literally just fight them and see who won. And, and the Gracies won challenge after challenge after challenge until they were locally and then regionally and then nationally famous. Um, Brazilian uh, Jiu-Jitsu became a very large sport in Brazil. It's a very interesting time. And this, like I said, is in the mid 1900s, um, and uh, the UFC ulti ultimately is doing the same okay. thing. It yeah. was, you know, a couple of the brothers came to the United States and they had the same challenge match. Yeah. They were gaining the same notoriety. They launched the UFC, and then on this big public platform, they did the same thing. They said, you know, uh, whoever it is can come challenge us. And at first, it was other artists, and then yeah. it was mixed martial artists, and, and that brings us to where we are today. But it's a fascinating story of, of not just saying this is an effective technique or this will get you out of trouble because I said yeah. so or claw them in the eyes or just something that sounds like it makes sense. They would, they would constantly test themselves and then publicly, you know, take these challenge matches. Wow. And th there are still, and th this, this went on, interestingly, this went on until the 90s um, and until the UFC. And of course, this was their big platform. Sure. But, it, but they, they became famous even through their UFC fame as having had this challenge. So the challenge lasted for a little while afterwards. I mean, there are still people who will walk into an academy and say they want to take the Gracie challenge, but it, but that would probably be more rare, probably more yeah. likely that they would just say, hey, I want to see how I do. But um, uh, the people who entered, uh, you know, jujitsu schools all the way up to the late 90s, which is when I was a student. I started yeah. in 1997. Yeah. This is when Eric found Jim's school and yep, he started yep, going. through the photos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there was actually some still, you know, in me fear that someone would come in Imagine, yeah. and they would want a challenge match because they, the, yeah. the going answer to, to I want a challenge match was, well, you're going to have to fight one of my blue belts before you can fight me. Okay. And I'm All like right. the first or second guy that got a blue belt in there. And so I was like, OK, so there was something very real about it and very real about the idea that I might have to prove against you know, just some street fighter, that, that this was the most effective martial arts. So sure. there was an imperative there then that isn't there now. I mean, the school we run now is, is uh, you know, yeah. fun and friendly and safe, and, it, and I, it always was for me too, but there is less of this looming threat that you'd have to literally defend the art yeah. to any comers. Mm -hmm. I want to get to jujitsu's basic purpose. Yes. It's leverage against strength. Is that what it is? How, does it teach you how to use a leverage system to defend yourself with people who might be stronger than you. Absolutely. The, one of the, <clears throat> I think, I, I don't, there isn't probably a martial art that would say, this works except against somebody bigger. I think every martial art th thinks so. Um, and there's a differentiation even within the martial arts of arts that focus on striking um, in, that, in that, you know, escape, wound, and kill, like, sort of yeah, schema. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, in order to hurt another person, uh, one of the things we can do is, is, is throw our fist or our, or our foot at them. And um, I, th I think most martial arts would say, well, I, we, we learn to kick the hardest or the highest or the fastest so that we could hurt somebody no matter how big they are. Um, Jiu-Jitsu answers this question a little differently, and it's more about the controlling aspect. Even when Jiu-Jitsu wounds, it's in the... It's in, a, in a, uh, a background of control, of establishing control and maintaining control. This is, this is not something, and most people would think, I'd be better off at arm's length from somebody bigger than me. 
as a smaller person. Uh, and on your feet, that's true. And to an extent, that's true. But if you're cornered and somebody's going to be getting on top of somebody, you better know how uh, to, to get out from somebody's controls. That means holding you on the ground or straddling you on the ground or holding you against a wall or holding you in a bear hug from behind or controlling your wrists or your neck. Uh, these are all these are all grips, and jujitsu focuses as a grappling martial art on those grips and on those controls. Jujitsu's um, proven through the UFC and through its acceptance by um, most militaries and the Secret Service. Uh, and when I say most militaries, that's that's internationally. Yes, and police services. As, as I was going out of the army. Yes. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> yes. And uh, even Marine Corps has Marine Corps martial arts program. McMap, Absolutely. Yes. And they that is uh, fundamentally a mix of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and some striking. Um, so so it's been accepted and proven as as one of the very best leverage martial arts for someone smaller than than their opponents. Uh, and and my my instructor now, who was one of Hoist's coaches for the UFCs, yeah. is Pedro Pedro Sauer, okay. and he's a living legend. Okay. And he's 150 pounds, 155 pounds. I'm 155 pounds. And Elio Gracie, the guy issuing these yeah. challenge matches, actually all three of these guys issued challenge matches and, yeah. and faced larger opponents. Yes. Uh, all like 155 pounds. And and they there didn't used to be weight limits. These challenge matches were against people who were much bigger and stronger. Yes. yes. Um, so and we see in the classroom all the time, uh, the focus on leverage over strength and size in jujitsu is is absolutely one of its most key components and one of the most um, identifying things about it because it's so proven. It's confusing to me the, the the ranking structure, the belts. Please tell our viewing audience, starting with the most elementary belt all the way up to that black belt you have around your waist there. That's right. So, uh, you know, when it comes to the belts, uh, every mar and it, it's confusing because martial arts vary. Yes. And even, even schools can sometimes vary a little bit. Um, but basically, most jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners today, go, it goes white, and then blue, and then purple, brown, black. And there are advancements within yeah. those belts. You'll get kind of four stripes along the way in each belt. So white belt, and then four stripes, and then blue belt, and then four stripes, all the way up to black belt. But you continue getting stripes after you're a black belt, and the, until your belt is, uh, you know, black and white, sort of striped, and then red and white. And ultimately, the grand masters of the art uh, from the original family are red belts, um, and they are, uh, they have, you know. I think it's uh, nine or ten stripes on, on a black belt. And stripes take a long time to get. All the actually the belt advancements all take kind of a long time in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to receive. And um, uh, I think the practitioners all know that that's one of the things that makes you so proud when you get mm -hmm. any advancement. Does it? <clears throat> excuse me. Does it take a toll on your body learning? Jiu Jitsu. I mean, yeah, you get uh, beat up. <laughs> I guess that's what people. Well, you're asking me at uh, 40 years old, <laughs> and uh, if you asked me when I was 20, I would have said, I would, I would have said, you know, I'm facing these bigger guys. Some are twice as big as me. We had people in class 280, 290, and no, I, I you know, I'm really using the, I'm using physics. I'm using the leverage of my yeah. body, just as I've been taught. Yep. And um, you know, but anything, I think that you do a lot, you know. Uh, for me, I, I did have a hiatus because of some music stuff I sure, did, but sure. at about over 20 years, having trained about 14 of, of those years, um, I would say you start to feel it eventually, but all of that just makes you want to be a, a and I mean this in a, in a good way, uh, a lazier practitioner. <laughs> so you can, some of the best yeah. guys yeah. are just so relaxed, you can't tell they're doing anything. Yeah. I mean, as with even wrestling or Aikido, or there's plenty yep. of martial arts where you're not supposed to be using a lot of, you're supposed to be using your opponent's energy yeah. and redirecting. and Like rope-a-dope. You're supposed to be rope-a-doping <laughs> these fools. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, and that's where, that's where ultimately we, uh, we try yeah. to get to. And getting older just helps you. Help you learn to, out of helps necessity. You let go. That's right. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna use that knee right now. That's what what <laughs> else can I do? <laughs> yeah. Now, do you recommend that people get involved in Jitsu? Do you, do you, in Jiu Jitsu, do you recommend that people do it? Is there an age limit, you know, when you're yeah, that's a good question. You passed past jujitsu's prime or yeah. your prime. That's a really good question. Um, we have we have had uh, a student at the at the school we have now who was um, 62 and 63 yeah. years old. Um, started actually. Um, I don't think I'm giving too much away. Yeah. I, I guess I won't name it. But started right. actually because of an altercation that he got into yep. at Home Depot, like over a cart. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, and this is a this is a fit guy. You would never know he was 62. So, so uh, okay. I'm not saying, 
uh, that that it was like two old guys fighting over a cart. It was a a, a big guy yeah. who was middle aged picking up picking you know on a guy who's also looked middle aged. But anyway, he was uh, 62 years old, and he came to me and he said, "I'd like to learn more." Yeah about defending myself, and I hear Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, is one of the best arts to start with, and so, I agree. So no, quickly. So yeah, no, I don't yeah. think you can be too old to start, and definitely not too young either. Quickly, let's wrap up with the how you proposed to Lisa. How did you do that, oh. quickly? Lisa, my wife um, got interested in Jiu-Jitsu yep. while I was uh, uh, teaching a, a women's program, and she came to class, and she tried, and she started. She became a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, and then somewhere along the way, I pretended I was giving her a belt advancement, and, and everybody was gathered around, and I proposed on the mat, okay. and everybody cheered. And it was really, it was really a great moment for us. Good. Yeah. Thank you. That's all the time we have for tonight's show. My guest is Greg Wood, and I want to thank him for sharing his story. Thank you for tuning in. Our stories are as different as each snowflake, and are as beautiful and numerous as the stars. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time, good night.